Hey there. Okay, what we have here is a Siemens transformer. Okay, this is part of a project that I'm working on, and um, I'll explain more as I go. But for now, um, I'm working on this while Spats Bear is working on his CT100. Um, so, what am I going to do with this? Well, <clears throat> most of you know that uh, one of our uh, hobbies is electric motors and fans. Well, every now and then, we come across one that we'd like to have, but it's three phase. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a converter which will allow us to run fans off of three phase power, you know, with nothing but 120 volt AC input. So, um, before I get started explaining this, I want to give a uh, great bit of thanks and special shout out uh, to David. I'll put a link to his channel here below. And uh, he's been very helpful with answering questions and guiding me along the way as I've made these purchases and uh, thought about how I'm going to do things. So, um, check out David's channel, subscribe, and you'll love it, trust me. Such a good guy. Um, so the first part of this project, and let me explain, um, electric motors that are single phase that run on 120 volts, 240 volts, whatever, like you might find around the house, uh, say your air conditioning, your refrigerator, a fan, this is just your standard 120 volt single phase motors. Um, the larger fans though, that run on a run with a three phase motor you would ordinarily need a three phase electrical supply now here this is a residential home I don't have three phase it would require three transformers supplying us and I don't even know if we could opt in for that with the power company here so we have to try something different um, there are portable power converters that you can buy commercially which involve uh, usually a 120 or 240 volt standard single phase motor driving a three phase generator. Um, that, in my opinion, is probably the uh, the most direct way to get three phase current. So we don't have one of those. They're very expensive. Um, so this is the next best thing. Now, what I'm going to do here is introduce a second item, and this is an Allen Bradley variable frequency drive. Now what you can do with these, and I'm not an expert, I'm learning on these. Um, I did dabble in these back in the days when I worked as an engineer. Um, however, it was usually with either Siemens or Allen Bradley or, uh, you know, one of the companies. I, I worked with them. I didn't design anything with this. Um, it's a little wobbly because the table is not quite perfect. But anyhow, what this can do, among other things, um, is it can accept incoming single phase current. Um, it can be supplied with, say, this transformer, uh, which is going to put out about 450 volts. Put that into the drive here, and then it can output actual three phase current. And I'll have a demonstration for that uh, coming up here in a minute, but for now, I'm going to get to putting this together. So here we have the drive. It's self-powered. It, you don't have to plug it in or provide a separate power supply for it. It does have this optional module which allows 24 volts uh, DC control of the drive from an external source. Um, I'm going to be removing that here in a moment. Okay, now I have removed the option module here, which I'm not going to need because this isn't going to be controlled by an external source like a PLC or or whatever. Um, also, I think it'd be a good time to note that in this video, I will not be actually connecting up anything, any motors, because I don't have any yet. <laughs> so, what we're going to do now is I'm going to connect the transformer output, <clears throat> which is 450 volts ish, to the line input on the drive here. And I'm sorry if I sound like an amateur because, well, I've never done this before. Um, 
in the past when I did work in the engineering field like I said already I did this on, with other engineers and under the supervision of people from the companies that are represented here which I have nothing to do with by the way Siemens just happens to be the transformer I bought on eBay and Alan Bradley is the uh, is the drive that I found so I'm going to tighten these up. What I'm going to do is hold these terminals with needle nose pliers so that I don't stress them as I tighten them firmly. Okay? Because these are actually taps of the uh, transformer coil. And I am running this transformer backwards. It's intended to be connected to up to 480 volts and it will step it down to 120 volts. But that's not what I'm doing in this case. All right. So those are connected. Let me switch out screwdrivers. And I'm going to connect the other ends to the drive here. Uh, I'm going to connect the black to line 2, L2, and the white to L3. And then I'm going to power it on and you're going to see showers of sparks and me dying and stuff like that. Probably be interesting YouTube footage. All right, so there I am connecting the power transformer to the variable speed, variable frequency drive. All right. Now, as I am learning about tinkering with these on the workbench, I must repeat, things may go wrong. All right, in the meantime, we're going to try this bitch out. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the power cord. This is a really good power cord that actually came off a piece of New Zealand hospital equipment and says hospital grade on it. So I guess this is going to be a hospital grade test. Now off camera here on the left, I have a little power strip that I'm going to plug this into. And then I'm going to be prepared to run. So three, two, one, go. All right, nothing's blowing up. There's no smoke or anything. I think I may have correctly connected it. Now, it's important to realize, while I flail my hands about here, don't touch these terminals. Over here, we have 240 volts. Over here, we have 450 volts. 450 volts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get out my little handy-dandy meter here, put it on... 600 volts and just hope that you can see that on camera because if I accidentally lay my arm down or reach for something or whatever I could get bit or I could die and that's always exciting all right so let me get this in the all right there you can kind of read it all right we're going to go from terminal to terminal here and we have got 440 volts all right Booyah. So far everything's working correctly there. Get him out of the way. Now, I'm gonna squeeze things together here a bit. Try to get the glare off the display there so you can see it better. Alright. Yeah, I guess I'll just leave it over there to the side so that you can see it good. Alright. Now I'm gonna try to program this VFD. All right, I just got finished uh, following David's instructions in the manual. I did a factory reset, which was good because there were a lot of strange parameters in there. Um, but I've got the drive set up currently to run a 240 volt motor up to twice the frequency that is designed for. So a 60 hertz. Uh, motor will run at 120 hertz at the maximum on this drive the way that I have it set up. And I just put a jumper here in the switch just so that it would you know, power on or provide an output. Um, but I don't have an, a motor to test with it or really anything else at this time. I am working on a, a demonstration uh, that I will film here later on that uh, will basically show you why I need this and what I'm going to be using it for. Also important, uh, one last thing, I have not grounded anything yet. 
I know I should, but I haven't grounded anything yet because I'm simply at the stage where I power on the drive and I set it to the parameters that I want and then I unplug it and wait until I can find the three-phase motor. So basically that's all I wanted to do, set it up. It does output roughly what the screen says, what the display says as far as frequency. Um, but again, I don't have anything to put a load on it or test it or anything. So, so far so good. Stay tuned. There'll be more later. Until then, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video.